Hi, I'm Russell Cole with Diablo. We are thrilled here to talk about the latest and greatest and really breakthrough technology that have entered the reciprocating saw market. And if you think about it, uh, the recip saw has been on the market for many, many years. However, it's been limited with uh, antiquated technologies such as the bimetal category. You can only go so far with steel cutting steel and wood. So we are bringing in carbide technology uh, that will significantly elevate and expand in terms of applications and really making the recip saw much more relevant um, and expanding the market significantly. And trends are radically changing. Harder to cut alloys, harder to cut materials are advancing and so we have a really uh, offer technology that allow you to cut those materials with the saw. So carbide in general lasts up to 50 times longer and you think about it, when carbides entered uh, key categories such as circular saw, blades, reciprocating or uh, uh, router bits uh, and even hammer bits, uh, it really takes over and dominates the category and in our opinion no doubt the same will happen in reciprocating blades. So we're thrilled to walk you through six categories of where we brought carbide technology into to them to radically improve the performance. Okay, so the first category we went after, uh, or at least we're going to talk about today, is pruning as well as fast cuts in clean wood. And you think about it, really the market today would much rather use a reciprocating saw than a chainsaw. Why? It's safer, easier to use, but also you can plunge into dirt with a recip saw that you can't really do with a chainsaw. In addition, a lot of applications are out there where you're just cutting clean wood. So for that, that's where carbide can really enhance and improve the overall cutting uh, performance. So. Okay, so the next category is really exciting. About six years ago, we introduced the first of the world carbide tip blade for nail embedded wood. And you think about nail embedded wood, it's really the spirit behind a uh, reciprocating saw, and that's because of demolitions, right? You plunge into a wall, you want to rip it out, and there's all kind of debris and shredded so we felt like this is a tremendous area for us to bring this type of technology on here so the first in the world that was version one in february of this year we've introduced version six or six different redesigns okay so the next category we're excited about is general purpose so this is for the contractor that cuts metal and wood both materials all day long so it's not the blade to cut nothing but solid metal or solid wood it's be able to cut a sundry different materials so we're very excited to launch the first in the world carbide tip general purpose blade designed, as you can see, a lot of different, uh, different products. So to illustrate this, well, there's really not a carbide tip uh, general purpose blade for us to compete against. In fact, there's not. Uh, so we will use the new Milwaukee uh, Wrecker blade. It's a great blade, great bimetal blade, but we're going to show the difference of carbide tip. So to illustrate this, we have, again, a two by four with three uh, hard heat treated nails as well as uh, angle iron on the top metal wood together mm. okay so the next category we're really excited about about three years ago we introduced the first in the world carbide tip metal cutting reciprocating blades and it really just broke open a whole new industry for plumbers this was very exciting because not only could you uh, uh, elevate performance versus bimetal, but you could expand in applications before you just simply couldn't cut, such as cast iron, stainless steel, really open up new, new markets for a reciprocating saw. So to illustrate that, we're going to show the game changer carbide tip um, a recent blade for thick metal. And in addition, uh, we're going to compare it to Lennox's brand new carbide tip uh, reciprocating blade. They just came out with about 90 days. Okay, so we'll do a, a simple comparison in stainless steel is scheduled uh, 304 in a two inch pipe. We're just going to put it on. You'll see the guys will actually start with their hands on it to do what's created, what's called feathering, just to get a pilot and then they'll let the tool do the work. So if you guys are ready, one, two, three, go. Okay, you can see the dramatic comparison in terms of uh, speed, but also this blade, although that's a pretty extreme application, uh, gets very, very hot. Uh, this blade is, is about done, uh, where the Diablo can still eat and is ready to go. go okay, so the next category, which is just now shipping, is our medium metal. 
And so this is a carbide tip reset blade for cutting metals, uh, mild steels and stainless steels from 1 16th inch to an eighth inch, uh, really dialed in. And this blade is significantly important or will be very important for the electrician because you're able to cut a, a wide variety of uh, materials, but uh, strut being one of the most popular of it. So if you can see versus our uh, three TPI blade right here, uh, versus our five to seven TPI blade here. If you look at the teeth, they're kind of small. When we actually go to medium metal, we actually fit 10 teeth per inch. So the teeth are very, very small. If you can get a shot of that whoop, right there, lots of teeth in there. And that's important too, when you're cutting this type of thickness uh, of materials itself, because it's gonna reduce vibration, uh, making a much more controlled cut and extending the life. So to illustrate this, what we have simply is uh, one, the Diablo 10 TPI medium metal blade cutting a uh, stainless steel uh, Schedule 304 uh, Unistrut. And we're gonna make a simple cut versus, we're gonna compare it versus um, the Milwaukee, uh, uh, call it torch blade. So we're gonna do the same uh, application, drop the saws. Uh, and, and again, the guys will feather it slightly and then let the tool do the work on my count. One, two, three, go. All right, so you're seeing now that uh, uh, that the bimetal uh, blades are actually strip, stripped out and it's worn versus the power of the carbide tip fluid through it, very controlled, low vibration. This blade has a lot more, a lot more gas in it and it wants to eat. Okay, so the sixth and final category we're gonna talk about today is thin steel. So we've actually designed a carbide strip uh, with 20 teeth ground into it to allow you to handle thin steel application. So very common to cut copper piping uh, or any kind of thin gauge piping or even kind of bar stock as we're going to illustrate here. Uh, uh, what we're going to cut here is stainless steel, but all metals are starting to get harder and harder alloys. And you're going to find it's going to get more and more difficult to make the cut with standard technology. So again, uh, over here, we have the carbide tip strip with 20 teeth uh, for the Diablo. And then we have a Lennox bimetal thin um, metal uh, reciprocating blade. Again, they're going to drop it, let the tool do the work, and you should see uh, some fireworks going on. At my count, one, two, three, go. So you can see this blade is actually almost catching on fire right now. Uh, it started off pretty good, and then the heat, because it's stainless steel, it was just too much, it just melted, literally melted the steel. Where the carbide stip, uh, strip, it actually created a lot of heat, but the carbide's able to handle that, continue to make the cut. This blade still has a lot more gas into it. So that's the power of carbide, the, that's the power of Diablo carbide, and, uh, and the power for what these applications we can now do with the reciprocating saw that you simply couldn't do before.